I'm not so willing to go easy on faith as some people seem to want to, um, because I believe that faith is a double-edged sword. I think that certain kinds of faith, um, i.e. inner faith, inner belief, um, inner conviction, is a wonderful thing. In fact, it probably makes for a better life to walk around with some sort of inherent belief in something. Um, it doesn't have to be a religious belief, it's just um, a faith that whatever idea you follow means life is good, life is worth it, life is worth the effort. That's an act of faith, saying that life is worth the hassle, life is worth living. But then there's the other side of the sword, the other edge. Um, with blind faith often comes blind acceptance of dogma blind acceptance of someone else's explanation of the nature of the universe. I recently did a video where I said that the idea of a permanent hell led me, um, started me on my road to rejecting religion altogether. And the only responses that I could get from people who were actually challenging me on this were that I wasn't humble enough and that I just should show more faith. Well, showing faith in, an, in a God that will permanently damn somebody to the worst punishments possible, even worse than the worst punish punishments possible because he's God after all. Um, having faith in a God like that is not only somewhat insane and Orwellian, if you ask me, um, but it has real world implications. In other words, if um, I'm going to try to save somebody from that, what am I willing to do? In the Spanish Inquisition, the thinking was, or the alleged thinking was, well, look, yeah, we're going to slice this guy to pieces before um, burning him at the stake and subjecting him to the most horrific tortures imaginable. But that's nothing compared to what he faces if we don't do this. Because if we don't uh, inflict hellish punishments on him prior to killing him, um, he's going to roast in hell for all eternity. What's just a few little, you know, minor tortures here? In the face of infinity, what we're doing to this guy is nothing. That's the downside of faith, you see. Um, they have blind faith that God is good, and uh, provided we can get people to believe him, it doesn't really matter what horrible things we do. I would actually say that blind faith is probably responsible for just about every religious crime that has ever existed, that has ever taken place. People who actually did commit these crimes because they believed that they were the right thing to do. The people that um, drove those planes into the Twin Towers were acting in blind faith. Why else would they do it? They're ending their lives, smashing those buildings down, committing this horrific atrocity. Um, because they had blind faith that A, they were going to go to heaven afterwards, B, that God truly wanted them to do it, and C, most invidious of all, the people that they were attacking deserved uh, their fate, deserved what they were getting. Maybe not the individuals in the building, but the United States in general deserved to get uh, a slap in the face like this. Blind faith. The problem with that kind of blind faith is the other guy's blind faith says that you are the sinner, not him. So here we have two people who sincerely believe that the other guy is bad and creating evil in the world, and next thing you know, we've got a nice big war on our hands. Blind faith and blind conviction. We'd better understand what we're getting into when we start playing with these things, when we start accepting these things. They can be good things, but they can also be extremely dangerous and destructive things. Like anything else, um, like any other tools, they can be benefits, they can be hazards. Faith can be a benefit, faith can be an extreme hazard. Thank you.